right, guys. So this is our last set of notes for this chapter. And we are going to um, get ready to test. So let's talk about writing proofs for angles and segments. All right, so let me get to all my pink. For those of you that want to know, yes, I like pink. All right, so here we go. All right, so we're going to take and look at the information that's given to us. And I'm going to enlarge this just a bit to see if that helps us. That does not help any. So let me zoom a little bit more. So no, that's not helping me. Nope. All right, this is not uh, working. All right, so we'll just go with this. So, all right. So what you're going to do is every time you're given some information, from this given information, you're going to see what can I conclude? What can I decide? So, for example, if B is between A and C, and they're all collinear, so you've got a line with three points on it, then what I do know is this first part plus the second part is going to equal the whole part. So this is where you have part plus part equals whole. And what you're doing is you're adding segments. So you're going to use segment addition as a reason. So segment addition is going to be your reason for making this statement. So you're going to be given something. You're going to say, I can conclude this because this definition, postulate, or fact lets me. Okay, so now the next one. Now they're saying B is the midpoint. Well, now if B is in the middle, we know that's where the equal signs go. So we know that AB is congruent to BC. Why? Because the definition of a midpoint lets me say so. Okay, so we're just going to go through, we're going to take all these given reasons and come up with something. Now it tells me that M is between this point, or, or sorry, between this angle. So since this point is right here in the middle of this angle, then I can draw a ray, and now I know that this angle plus this angle adds up to the whole angle. So part plus part equals whole. So instead of segment addition, it's going to be angle addition. So adding two parts together equal the whole thing. All right. So let me scroll up. All right. Now this time they're telling me that I have a bisector because it's telling me right here that MR, so ray MR, so actually this should say ray RM. This is a typo. So ray RM, so this ray right here it bisects this angle. So since it bisects, that means this piece is equal to this piece. So that's where your part equals part. And I can say that because the definition of an angle bisector. So what I want you to see is that right here, segment addition and angle addition, they work the same way. Part plus part equals whole. Part plus part equals whole. And then we have definition of a midpoint and definition of an angle bisector, which both of these are your part equals part, okay? So segment addition and angle addition work the same way. Midpoint and an angle bisector work the same way, all right? Okay, so now what I want you to see here, this one is a very common one and it's used all the time. So right here you see that it says AB is congruent to CD. And then right here it says, well, if it's congruent, then it's equal. So that means that anytime something is congruent, I know that it's equal. So I can go this way. But did you know if it's equal, then it's also congruent? And what we use here is called the definition of congruence. All right. It's called the definition of congruence. And the same thing for angles. Okay. It says, the, it says angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF. Well, if they're congruent, guess what? They're also equal. And if they're equal, guess what? They're also congruent. So that is also the definition of congruence. Now, you're going to see it worded different in different books. 
Um, I just use the definition of congruence because it's the same whether you're talking about a segment or an angle, but you may see it um, ordered, let's see, definition of congruent segments, or you may see it as definition of congruent angles. Okay, so definition of congruence will cover both of these definitions with one definition. They mean the same thing. But just so you know, if you see that it's talking about segments, they may want you to use congruent segments. If it's talking about angles, they may want you to use congruent angles. Either way, it's the definition of being congruent. All right, the next thing here, it says that segment DB and segment AC are perpendicular. Well, if these two lines are perpendicular, then we have a right angle. So that means that if they are perpendicular, there is a right angle. Why? Well, because that's the definition of perpendicular. Okay. So since this is what's given, I can say, well, if they're perpendicular, I know that's a right angle. And I'm able to do that because I know the definition of perpendicular lines. All right. If angle ABC, or sorry, DBC, if angle DBC is a right angle, so if DBC is a right angle, then that means it equals 90 degrees. Why? Because that's the definition of a right angle. So do you kind of see how it works? You take these things that are given, and because you know the definition, you're able to say something else. So if I know these two angles, 1 and 2, are supplementary, then that means I know they add up to 180 because I know supplementary means 180. Why? Because that's the definition of supplementary. So do you see what I was saying when I said you have to, have to, have to know your definitions? Okay. Same thing for complementary. If two angles are complementary, then those two angles will equal 90. Why is that? Hmm. The definition of complementary. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and do some proofs they're going to give us some information. We're going to make a, a conclusion, and this is going to be our reason. So this is going to be all your given information. This is going to be your statements, and this is going to be your reasons. Okay? All right, so let's look at our first proof. So we're going to reflect the beam of a desk lamp off of a mirror lying flat on our desk. We're going to determine if angle DBA so DBA, so DBA is this whole angle right here. We want to know, is it congruent or is it equal to EBC? Is it equal to this one? So going through, taking the very first thing, you always have to start with what's given. So I say the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2 because it is given. Now. Let me go over here. Actually, we'll just do this. All right. So now I know that DBA, so DBA, I know that is the angle 3 plus angle 2. So if I add this angle plus this angle, it gives me the whole angle. So part plus part equals whole. That is angle addition. Now, Right here, it said that 1 and 3, that these two angles are equal. So if I replace 3 with 1, now DBA stays the same, 2 stays the same. These two were switched because they are equal to each other, and that is substitution. So now, if that's the case, so I'm going to delete, I'm going to delete this um, ink here. All right, so now I know that since the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2, so now I know that 2 plus 3 equals that and 1 plus 2. So now I see that this and this are exactly the same. So that's one of that transitive rule where those two pieces, you know, if... A, let me go down here. If A equals B and B equals C, then we know A equals C. 
because those pieces match. That's how this is working. These two pieces match, so these two pieces are equal. So we used angle addition again, and then we used the transitive property. So I will clear the ink so we can see it again. So we know that these two angles add up to equal this angle. I know these two angles add up to equal that one. I'll both of these by angle of addition. And since this piece matches this piece, I'm able to get what they want me to prove, which is by the transitive property, I know those two are equal. And that's all we had to do was prove. Even though we could see based on the tick marks, our eyes know, but we have to be able to lay it out in a logic sequence. All right, number two. So it says given that angle e, AEB, so given that angle AEB, so let me get back over here to a skinnier version. All right, so it is a complement. So AEB is a complement of BEC that's given. Check, we wrote it down. Now, what can we say because they're complementary? Well, we know that AEB is a complement of B, E, C. So that means these two angles will add up to be 90 degrees. So angle A, E, B plus angle B, E, C equals 90. That is the definition of being a complement. Two angles that add up to 90. Now, A, E, C, so A, E, C is this whole angle. It's equal to A, E, B. It's equal to this piece plus this piece. So part plus part equals whole, that's your angle addition. And now you see that you've got this piece right here and this piece right here, which are the same. So now I know that this is equal to 90. So AEC is equal to 90 by the transitive property. So now, using the definition of supplementary, so now let me change the colors here for a second. So AED is this side. So that side plus this side equals 180. Definition of supplementary. Let me scroll up just a little. So now, if AEC is equal to 90, then I can replace this with 90. So my next step is AED plus 90 equals 180. So we use substitution. So all I did was replace that and rewrote it. Now solve. If I subtract 90 from both sides, I get that this angle AED is equal to 90 degrees. So here I was able to say that it was equal to 90 degrees by using that substitution. All right. So make sure, guys, if this is confusing, like whatever part, like if, if going from this part to this part confused you, or if canceling these two out confused you, put a star by it, circle them, um, put a question mark, do something on your notes so that we can go over it in class because we're going to be doing these for the next two days. All right, now last one. So angle one is a complement of angle two. So that means these two add up to 90 and two is congruent to three. So starting here, so angle one is a complement of angle two is given. They wrote that out for us. And angle two is congruent to angle three. Well, that's given also. You can write given as many times as they give you information. So angle one plus angle two equals 90. Remember, because they're complements, they add together to be 90. That's the definition of complementary. And then here, we went from being congruent to actually being equal. So remember that very front page where I said, if you're congruent, you're equal. If you're equal, you're congruent. That's the definition of congruent angles. So now, with that being said, 
if 1 plus 2 is 90 and 2 is equal to 3, then can I replace 2 with angle 3? Because they want me to use substitution. So now I'm going to say the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 90. So now, since 1 plus 3 equals 90, then that means 1 and 3 are complements by the definition of complementary. So I was able to prove that these two angles right here, they told me they were complements. And since these two are congruent, then that means these two right here are also complements. And this is your logic from step one to step six, reason why. All right, so we are going to do lots of questions and practice when you get to class. So I will see you guys then. Have a great day.